Ladies and gentlemen, the moment we all have waiting for has finally arrived. Over 20 years in the making, and over 6 months after its launch into the eternity of deep space, the first full-color images from the most powerful space telescope ever created are here. And they didn't let us down. Behold the beauty of the universe in a never-before-seen quality and depth. This was the first image we got from the Hubble telescope 32 years ago, and this is the first ever image taken by the James Webb Space Telescope. In this video, we're gonna go ahead and have a look at the new images, talk about what they are and what they're showing us, basically, and I will also give you some interesting facts about each one of them. I'm super excited to do this, so uh, let's begin. The first image was released yesterday, and what we can see here is a massive foreground galaxy cluster called SMACS0723. Not the prettiest name, but this is one of the deepest and sharpest infrared image of the distant universe to date. Known as Webb's first deep field, the image shows the galaxy cluster as it appeared 4.6 billion years ago. 4.6 billion years ago. <laughs> Now, you may be wondering, why do some of the galaxies in this image appear bent? This is because the galaxy cluster located right at the center of the image and their combined mass exerts such a potent force of gravity that it is able to literally bend the light rays coming from more distant galaxies behind it and thus creating a magnifying effect. And this effect is called gravitational lensing. I'm sure Albert Einstein would have been delighted to see this. Here is a direct comparison with Hubble's image of the same galaxy cluster, and to some people this may not look like much, but the real difference becomes obvious when we zoom in on both images. Have a look at this. Amazing, isn't it? And here are some more comparisons put together by Victor on Twitter. Look how much sharper and clearer the new images are. This is the real power of Webb, and I bet we haven't seen anything yet. Also, bear in mind that Webb was able to capture these images in about half a day, 12.5 hours to be precise, much less than the 10 days that it took Hubble to do the same. Think about that, it's not only the quality and the sharpness, but also the speed at which the telescope is able to churn out discoveries like this. And in here you can see local stars located inside our own galaxy, the Milky Way, which are the spiked objects you see, and everything else that isn't spiky are all independent galaxies, each one containing millions if not billions of stars, and then each star possibly containing its own set of planets. And if we zoom in here, we can see a tiny red galaxy as it was 13 billion years ago. 13 billion years ago, like right next to the Big Bang almost, <laughs> like uh, are you kidding me, <laughs> oh man. Now I have a question for you and I want you to answer honestly. After seeing this image, with the stupid amount of worlds that may be hiding within it, do you think we're alone in this universe? And with that being said, let's move on to the next image, shall we? The second science image that was released was not actually an image, but rather an exoplanet spectrum. In fact, the most detailed exoplanet spectrum to date. This exoplanet in question is called WASP-96b, and it is a giant planet outside our solar system, composed mainly of gas. It is located around 1100 light years away from Earth, and it completes an orbit around its star, which is a yellow dwarf, every 3.4 Earth days. It is about half the mass of Jupiter, and its discovery was announced in 2014. Now, what Webb has been able to discover in 2022 is that there is water in its atmosphere along with clouds or haze. This was accomplished with the help of the near-infrared imager and slitless spectrograph by analyzing the brightness of precise colors of light coming from its star as the planet circles around it. As these light rays 
disappears through the atmosphere, Webb was able to detect the presence of specific gas molecules based on the brightness change of individual wavelengths of infrared light. In fact, this is where Webb outshines other telescopes. It is able to detect a remarkably wide range of wavelengths, especially those that are longer than 1.6 microns and which are particularly sensitive to water as well as other molecules like oxygen, methane and carbon dioxide. So if you're looking forward to discovering some sort of alien life in a distant world sometime in the near future, this telescope is your best bet. Moving on, we have the beautiful, marvelous Southern Ring Nebula. Catalogued as NGC 3132, it is an expanding cloud of gas that surrounds a dying star. It measures about half a light year in diameter and is located approximately 2500 light years away from Earth in the Vela constellation. This is an astonishing image. You can see waves or rings of clouds made of gas and dust expelled by the dying star are at the center of this scene, which we actually cannot see. That's right, there are actually two stars in the center of this picture, which was taken with Webb's near-infrared camera. But it was Webb's mid-infrared camera that allowed scientists to see the second star for the first time ever, which is the one that is actually dying and expelling all that dust and gas that forms the nebula. Each wave represents an episode in its life where the star lost some of its mass. The widest shells of gas toward the outer areas of the image were ejected earlier, those closest to the star are the most recent. Both stars are locked into a tight orbit, but the brighter star, the one that we can actually see in the near-infrared image, is in an earlier stage of its evolution and it will probably end up ejecting its own planetary nebula sometime in the future. And again, one of the biggest advantages that Webb offers is how far into the past it can look. If you look closely, these images also reveal many distant galaxies in the background. Most of the multicolored points of light seen here are galaxies, not stars. For comparison, here is an image of the same nebula taken by Hubble. Next, about 290 million light years away from us, we have yet another jaw-droppingly awesome image, this time of Stefan's Quintet, located in the Pegasus constellation. As the name implies, this is a group of five galaxies and was actually the first compact galaxy group ever discovered, courtesy of Edward Stefan back in 1877. The name, however, is a bit of a misnomer, since, as you can see in this picture, the telescope is able to resolve individual stars within the galaxy located at the left, thus proving that it is much closer to us than the other ones and doesn't belong to the group. In fact, they are separated by a distance of about 250 million light years. It is also the most studied of all the compact galaxy groups, and the four galaxies that are located further away are locked in a sort of cosmic dance of repeated close encounters, which cause them to show distorted shapes, elongated spiral arms, and long gaseous tidal tails containing a myriad of star clusters. These new images from Webb also show us in unprecedented detail how interacting galaxies trigger the formation of new stars in each other. And in this other mid-infrared view here, we can see how Webb pierces through the dust, giving new insight into how interactions like this may have driven galaxy evolution in the early universe. And if you pay attention to the uppermost galaxy, there is actually a supermassive black hole at its nucleus that is 24 million times the mass of the Sun which unfortunately we cannot see, but it is actively pulling in material and putting out light energy equivalent to 40 billion suns. And here you can see again an image comparison between Hubble and Webb. You heard me right, 40 billion suns. <laughs> and finally we get to the most mind-blowing image taken by the James Webb Space Telescope so far, the Cosmic Cliffs, located at the edge of a nearby young star-forming region in the Carina Nebula. This is basically a huge nursery where stars are born, and this is a particularly large nebula located in the constellation Carina, approximately 8,500 light years away from Earth. It may look like a landscape of mountains and valleys, but in reality it is the edge of a giant gaseous cavity 
within the region called NGC 3324 and the tallest peaks in this image are about 7 light years high. The cavernous area has been carved from the nebula by the intense ultraviolet radiation and stellar winds from extremely massive hot young stars located in the center of the bubble above the area shown in this image. And this radiation is slowly but surely eroding this wall or edge away. Webb has been able to reveal emerging stellar nurseries and individual stars that are completely hidden in visible light pictures. This is because due to Webb's sensitivity to infrared light, it can peer through cosmic dust to see these objects thus unveiling a sea of glittering stars behind it. Every individual dot of light that you see here is a star, and many of them may contain their own set of planets. Think about the scale of that. There are some zones trying to resist this radiation, and if you pay close attention, you may notice a sort of haze or steam rising from the edges of this cosmic wall. And this is actually extremely hot dust and ionized gas streaming away from the nebula due to the relentless radiation. Webb's ability to peer through cosmic dust also gives us an unprecedented view into the stars in their earliest rapid stages of formation, which for an individual star, this period only lasts about 50,000 to 100,000 years. And we are not done yet, because we have another image of the cosmic cliffs. This one is a bit different because it was made possible thanks to Webb's mid-infrared instrument, or MIRI, and it is able to show us many more details, such as these dusty planet-forming disks around young stars that appear in pink and red. So uh, now that we know a little bit more about these images, the question is, what are scientists going to look at next? Now that the six-month-long commissioning period is over, official science observations will commence with Cycle 1, which is already packed with a variety of programs ranging in size from small and medium to large. These programs will tackle a colorful palette of objects and topics ranging from exoplanets, galaxies, supermassive black holes, all the way to stellar physics, solar system astronomy, and perhaps most exciting of all, the observation of the large-scale structure of the universe, which may or may not answer questions like is the Big Bang Theory 100% correct? Is the universe 13.7 billion years old indeed? Was there anything before that? And is the universe finite or is it eternity? So, a lot of exciting stuff to look forward to. I am really pleased with the first images from the James Webb Space Telescope. And I hope you are too. And honestly, I already can't wait for the next images to blow up our minds. <laughs> it's been an absolute pleasure making this video for you. So please let me know if you enjoyed it. Keep marveling at these images and I will see you soon in the next one. Have a nice day, whatever you are. Take care. Bye bye.